We'll start off with what's called an XREF. If you just type it in, XREF, and then we're going to attach a drawing. So there's the architect plan view, and then we'll just click OK or click Open. And I never specify on screen, I just leave it the way it is. All the scaling is one to one, and my specification as far as, far as specifying on screen is just left it open. I don't, I won't do it on screen. The biggest part that I've learned is to use the overlay rather than the attached. Okay, the overlay acts more like a transparency, and the attachment acts more like a block. And I, you know, I found that it's better just to overlay it so that when I'm done, I simply detach it. What's called detaching, so it works really well. So I'll click OK. Here's, here's the first rule. You never want to cut and paste architecture drawings. They have um, a lot of extra layers most of the time. Uh, they're usually difficult to work through. And the best thing for us is to detach it so we don't have their layers, we don't have their dimension styles, we don't have their text styles. And occasionally they'll have VBA stuff running in the background, sometimes in their drawings that cause conflict with microfilm. So the difference is, is, is if you if you copy from the DWG and cut and paste into the current drawing, it, it makes a mess. It, that's just the bottom line. Yeah, and on top of that, um, architects have a whole. They have their own drawing style. So what we're what we're really after only is the walls. Okay, we don't want their textiles. We don't want any of their dimension styles. We just simply want the layouts. Uh, it saves time from having to scale stuff. It saves time from having to print up drawings. We bring it in, we simply trace the wall and then detach it when we're done. And then I do that the entire time. I'll, I may leave it there or I may not. Sometimes what I'll do to specify screen is I might specify on screen only to draw a wall. And then the next one I place, I won't place it on top of that wall. I'll, I'll pick a spot somewhere else in the drawing to draw the, the next room. So I'll just click OK to this. The next thing you want to make sure that we're doing in Microvellum is we want to make sure that we are um, drawing in 2D. So I'll change my drawing style, make sure that we're drawing in 2D. Okay, so here's here's a good one right here. I'll use this one. We always want plan views to be facing downward. You'll see how this one is facing up. We never want to do that. So we always want to intentionally, if we have to, rotate this X ref around. It acts like a block. So rotate it around so you always have this position. Rotate the whole XREF because what happens is when we go to trace, like I'm going to show you next, when we go to trace it, we can't rotate microvellum's walls. Once we once we place microvellum's walls, they're pretty much there. We can't rotate their walls. So it's it's easier just to let's say that's let's just say that's the one we want to do. Um, I'll just simply rotate it here. Um, there it is. And so let's say that I'll do this wall and then we'll do this back wall, okay? I'll show you an example of how I would do this. So I'll go to my rooms and I'll go to um, my 2D walls. Usually you have to change this. I, you know what I'll do? I'll change the user files so that this is always a default. This should usually be 120 most of the time. It's usually default walls. And normally this is 5. Then we're going to click draw walls. And again, of course, you know we always run clockwise in a room. So we start from the left hand side and move up. So I'll simply just trace over um, something like this. So that's that. So if I wanted to do the next one, then what I would do is I'd rotate this one. And I'll pick a point out here so I can rotate it away from this here. Um, so I'm going to just do this one over here. Just kind of give you an idea because we always want to face this direction. So with the one. Uh, the one that I use to do this to get countertops drawn in for myself is the multi-line. Have you used multi-line? Yeah, I use it quite a bit for countertops, and I'll show you how that works here. So I use multi-line. Um, I'll change the scale to to the, the depth of the countertop. So I'll type in S for scale, and I'll type in 25.4 or 25.5 uh, because normally what we use for countertop thicknesses. And so I just simply because it's at the top. I just draw that in. Okay, see that? Easy, easy, easy. I'll do multi-line, I'll show you the, the splash. So now I'll draw the splash in. I'll type in S for scale, and the splash normally is about an uh, inch and a quarter, depending on how we build it. And sometimes it's three quarters, but I put inch and a uh, quarter in, and I'll just trace over the, where the splashes should be. Now I got my splash. Yeah, so now I'm gonna go ahead and do my XREF and I'm going to detach it. I'm going to right click 
um, right click and I'm going to detach my drawing. So now what's left is simply just the microvellum drawing portion and that's it. Okay. And that's really what we're after right there. And so what I'll do is then we'll go in there and I'll elevate the wall. Okay. So you can either elevate the wall with this button or you can go to the elevate wall on the pullout on here. Elevate wall. Normally what I'll do is I'll line up just because it helps. Okay. All right. So I'm going to draw this in real quick. Draw product, uh, type in W for wall, select the wall. And of course, you know this sort of stuff. So let's go, for, oops, I'll just go through this real quick then. So they're all 36. Um, so I'll cheat, I'll say three at 36, starting with a one inch offset for our scribe. And select OK. Height is good, 36, 30. They did have a valance on top. It was 75 because uh, of because of soffits, and I'll show you how to do soffits here in just a little bit. Click OK. Okay, so a couple things have to change. I think I think it was 18. Okay, so there's that one. Finish the right end because it's exposed now. And finish the left end because this one's exposed. Okay, then uh, we get to draw the bases in, which is what? Let's see here. We got a sink um, and then two base cabinets. So uh, too much information can be bad. And, and that's really the, the balance that we have with drafting is we need to be able to give the shop and the architects what they need without giving them too much. Yeah, okay, a plug outlets, you know, are too much. Um, microwave drawings are too much. Um, anything that we're not built, you gotta think about it is what are we giving them? Are we giving them outlets? No. Are we giving them uh, microwaves? No. We simply state microwave by others so they know it's, so I'll just type in product and I'll go to the left. Since Go to the left, I'll put two in, click OK. Finish this left end. Okay, now this is where we start detailing. So we've put in the products. This is all that we need from MicroRealm. The rest is going to be up to us. So I start doing things like moving these down so it's not in the way. Um, we do have some open areas, so uh, we can put that in like that and just start drawing lines in is what I do. I'll do my multi line. My top thickness is 1.5, so I'll do a scale and then set it 1.5. Use my tracking to start. Go to the end, and I always overhang 0.5. Generally, what I've done. And then I'll do a polyline, um, go up four inches, and do my multi line again. Change my scale to 1.25 because that's the thickness of our and there's there's a countertop okay now it's little things make the biggest difference okay so i'm going to go find uh, the blocks using microvellum blocks here and i have a few i can probably redo this and add my own uh right now we'll just use microvellum so i'm going to do like double sink elevation and then double click there i'll place it about right there okay we don't need this so i'll delete this i'll delete all this we know it's a sink already so we don't need to say it's a sink it's, you know detail is important okay Whenever you're looking at an elevation in 2D, um, you're not going to be seeing that backsplash go through that. Okay, so trim trim that. It makes things pop out and makes the drawing more realistic, even though it's simple 2D lines. Okay, so pay attention to that sort of detail. Um, and then, so that all looks pretty good. So now I'm going to finish the dimension here. Um, normally we have to put in dimension for the countertop. So I'll start a countertop. I'll track that and bring that down. We always have to tell the size of the filler, so I use microvalence command uh, continue dimension, which is CT. CT. I'll hit enter because I want to start this one here and select that end. MD is really handy. It moves dimension. Okay, so I'm just move, drag that up here. CT again. MD. Moves it out there. 
always have overall heights. So there's a height CT and just finish that, continue that dimension string. Always have above finish floor basically is what it is. So dimension, um, I do D. And I use my D command quite a bit, which is for the, the dimension line. Um, and the reason why I do that is because Mike Realm recognizes it and it sets your dimension style and also your scale. Yep, D, D enter. And that's a Mike Realm one, so. Okay, so that's that. Now, if I wanted to, I could probably come over here and do one more dimension string just to show the heights over here. Sections are there to detail more of what the products are, how deep the interior, the height of the toe kick. Uh, and in this case, we did have a toe kick that was six inches. I didn't include that, but the toe kicks were actually six inches high. See that? So I didn't put that in there, but if you had to, uh, a simple dimension here, MD is more than enough. Okay. Um, I won't, I, but I won't continue that dimension string up because it starts making the drawing look too dirty. Yeah, so I don't like doing that. And so I'll just simply just take that off and give what's necessary. Now that we have this, the next thing are leaders. Now leaders, one of the rules uh, in draft, you never really want to cross dimension lines and leader lines. So you want to keep it clean. In the past, I've done several different things and I'll show you a couple of them. I'll move this out. Some In the past, I've actually drawn a line here like this and I'll show you why. And we really want to keep this area right here where all the cabinets are, we want to keep that as clean as possible. We want to see this. We don't want to be cluttering it up with text and uh, and dimensions. We want to keep this clean. We want to see this for what it is. You know, it's it's an elevation. We detail everything out as much as possible off to the side. Okay. So one of the rules is you don't want to cross dimension lines, and I try not to do that. Sometimes you can. Sometimes you know you can't avoid it. It's just the way it is. But most of the time you can you can keep things separate. So. So I got dimension lines. I'm going to type in LE for leader. So LE and then enter. I usually use my near command. So I'll type in NEA and enter. And that allows me to grab anywhere along the side here. See that? NEA. Yeah. So I can grab here. So we never want to do a leader style that's like this. Okay. We don't want to be in space. Okay. We don't want to be in the middle of a cabinet. Okay. We want to be on an edge. So... That's why I use a near command so that I can select that. And then I'll do another near command over here and enter. And this one was PL, PL-4, uh, X uppers, I think is what I used, uh, I used. Okay. And we'll come back and fix that in a little bit. And again, I'll come over here, near. Nope, uh, more detail. I'll use ET to edit my any of my text. ET uh, is, again, a microvalent command, so ET, enter. And I'll just say uh, PLAM2, countertop with, yeah, PL4, P countertop, and splash, or something like that. Okay. And then, again, I'll do any um, LE. And then this, I think this is PL4 again. And one of the other notations that we always use um, is we always tell them what the base is. Sometimes it is a plastic laminate, I mean, or wood or something. In this case, it's not. So I'll just, I'll just say either vinyl base by others or I'll say scheduled base by others. I'll just put vinyl because I can't spell this morning. 